Hi everyone, in this video I'll show you how to use hashing and salting techniques in C Sharp to safely store user passwords and also mention some best practices while doing so. In a system that stores user credentials, we must pay careful attention to how we store passwords. We must never store passwords in plain text. That's why we use hashing. Hashing a password means applying a one-way encryption algorithm that will produce a cryptographic string. One-way encryption can't be decrypted, making it impossible to infer the original password from the hashed string. Now, we have to pay close attention when choosing a hashing algorithm. As more and more computational power becomes available to the general public, hashing algorithms considered secure enough for password storage in the past became insecure. This is because the hackers are now able to bridge them via brute force. Some examples are the old MD5 and SHA algorithms. You must never use these for password hashing. On the other hand, there are a few other hashing algorithms that are safe. Password-based key derivation function 2, bcrypt or scrypt or ergon2. In this video, I will use the pbkdf2 algorithm as it is available natively in the .NET framework. Unlike MD5 or SHA, this one enhances password protection to brute force by adding extra complexity. Now, you must be aware that hashing isn't enough. And for that, we use password salting. We must always salt our passwords before storing them. Salting is the process in which we add a random piece of information to the password before hashing, making every password hash unique. This will render brute force attacks much more difficult. Now, let's see how we can hash and salt our passwords in C-sharp with the pbkdf2 algorithm. So, to start, in the program class, I'm going to define a few starter fields. First, let's define the key size constant as the desired size in bytes of the resulting hash and also the size of the random salt. We will use it for the random salt later on. Next, I need the iterations field and set it to 350,000. pbkdf2 can be applied multiple times to a given input value to strengthen the result hash and that's why I define the iterations constant. Finally, I need the hash algorithm field where I will define the underlying hashing method the pbkdf2 algorithm will use for derivation. Now, let's define the hash password method that takes a password in a clear text and sets a value to an outsold parameter. Inside, I will first generate the salt value by using the random number generator class and calling the getBytes method with a key size as an argument. Here, I create an array of bytes with a cryptographically strong random sequence of values. After the salt, I need a hash. And for it, I will use the RFC class and call the pbkdf2 method where I have to pass several arguments. First, I need to encode the password. So, let's use the encoding class with the UTF-8 property and call the getBytes method with the passed password as an argument. Also, I need to provide the salt, the number of iterations, my hash algorithm and the key size. Finally, I need to return the string and to do that I will use the convert to hex string method to convert my hash value to its equivalent string representation that is encoded with uppercase hex characters. With this method in place, let's try and use our hashing functionality to produce some results. Here I use our hash password method to obtain the hash associated with the clear text password as the first argument and the random salt in the salt output parameter and I want to print both in the console. So let's run the app and we can see the result. Both hash and salt are generated. Now just creating the hash password and the salt isn't enough. We have to provide some logic to verify the hash passwords. 
Since we can't decrypt hash algorithms, we must hash the incoming password again and compare the result with the hashed version we originally stored for the user. The correct password will always have the same hash. So, let's define the verify password method that takes the clear user's password, the stored password hash for the user, and the associated salt. It will return true if the provided clear password generates the same hash. Inside, I will create a hash to compare variable and repeat the process for hashing I used in the previous method, just this time without the encoding part. Also, we need to provide value for iterations, hash algorithm, and key size that match the values used in the initial hashing. Now that I have a hash generated, I can do the comparison part. So let's use the return keyword and call the cryptographic operations class and the fixed time equal method to compare our newly generated hash and our stored hash. Just this time, we need to convert the stored hash from the hash string because in the previous method, we converted it to the hash string. Now, one important thing here to note. In opposition to other comparison methods, the fixed time equals method will take the same amount of time to do the hash comparison regardless of the input hash correctness. This is necessary because hackers can infer information about the internal state of our system based on execution time variations, allowing them to potentially guess the correct password. These are called timing side channel exploits. Great. Now, let's again test this complete logic with both hashing and verification. You can see, I use the ternary operator to populate the verification result string with is successful or has failed strings based on the boolean result the verification method returns. Now, once I run the app again, you can see that the verification is successful. So, I already shared a few pieces of advice during this video, but let's see a few more best practices for password salting. First, we must use a different salt for each password. I strongly discourage using a system-wide salt since it makes the technique much less effective. If possible, it's a good idea to store password salt separately. Next, for maximum effect, our password salt must be hard to guess for an attacker. The recommendation is to use a cryptographic random number generator, such as random number generator, in the system security cryptography package to generate our password salt. Finally, we must ensure that password salts are long enough to be effective. A good rule of thumb is to make them the same size as our output hash. And you saw that in my code. So, that's it. I hope you learned a thing or two about this very important security feature. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.